Ja nyt siirrymme ryhmien puhe. And now we move to the uh, groups. And first on behalf of the EPP, Mr. Bilcik, one and a half minute. Sa, želal by som si, aby sme dnes túto diskusiu nemuseli. Thank you very much indeed, Madam President. I do wish that we didn't need to have the debate that we're having today at all. But the fact is there was a tragic case of Jovan Šovanič, uh, a man who died in the aftermath of a police intervention in a Belgian um, detention facility. We know that there are other cases of um, brutality where citizens have been attacked because of the, the color of their skin. Now, I think this represents clearly a test of European values. It's our duty, therefore, to stand up against an, any form of police brutality and to uncover the truth. This form of brutality and cruelty cannot be allowed to exist um, in Europe with impunity. This, uh, if this is not uh, uncovered, we will never be able to act as guarantors of human rights. And if you look at the brutal facts of this case in uh, Belgium, you will see that um, without media attention and the images being distributed widely, we would not have had this discussion today. Now, we clearly have a situation that exists in Belgium. Thank you, Mr. Bilcik. And then on behalf of the S&T group, I give the floor to Mrs. Zippel. One minute. Thank you. Police violence in the EU. There are chat groups uh, based on racism, uh, uh, anti-Semitic groups, uh, groups using a swastika, groups supporting capital punishment. In recent months alone, a number of cases have come to the fore in a number of EU member states, but no, our uh, police officers are not under general suspicion. Nonetheless, cases show a problem, and that's precisely why our police are reliant on public trust, which is why uh, everywhere we need independent studies into extremism amongst the police and external reporting centres uh, for those affected and for police officers for personal evaluation and personal uh, assessment also to take place and cases to be reported. Racism and extremism are a danger to our democracy and therefore in all fields of our society they must be combated. Thank you. Thank you very much Mrs. Slippel and then on behalf of the Renew Group uh, Mrs. Intveld. One and a half minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, uh, I would like to start by uh, expressing my sympathy for uh, the widow, Mrs. Chovanec, uh, and her little girl, because uh, I think it's quite horrible that she was forced to publish the video uh, of the, uh, the violent death of her husband. Um, now, as to excessive police violence, incidents will always occur, but what sets apart uh, democratic rule of law from uh, dictatorships, for example, is that there is a follow-up, that there is no impunity for uh, excessive police violence. Uh, and here there is a big question mark over this case. The question is, why was there no investigation? Why did we have to wait for the video to be published before the Belgian authorities uh, started to move? And when are we actually going to get responses to this question? Now, this is not just a Belgian matter or a Slovak matter because it concerned a Slovak citizen. It is very much a European matter because if one national system doesn't function, then the whole chain is broken. In, in the context of police and justice cooperation, we have to be able to rely uh, on, on each other and to, to trust each other. And here there is clearly uh, an issue and we need answers. And that is also why the uh, democracy, rule of law and fundamental rights 
monitoring group is taking up the issue and this week we're going to have a hearing. We will also be hearing uh, uh, Mrs. de Bolle, who is the head of Europol, uh, but also the head of police in Belgium uh, at the time. Now, finally, with regard to the broader issue of excessive police violence and racism, which has also been addressed by the Commissioner, I would like to repeat the call for a European police code of ethics, but also, I think, training. Because in this case, we are still waiting for the answers and the motives behind uh, what happened. But I think uh, many police people will also confirm that there are lots of police people who are just not adequately equipped for this kind of uh, situation. So uh, I hope we get answers because it's in the European interest. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next, uh, Mr. Lars Patrick Berg from the ID group, one and a half minutes. Frau Präsidentin, Herr Minister, ich spreche. Madam President, Minister, I am speaking to you from the Munich Information Office of the European Parliament. I'm aware of the fact that law enforcement authorities are generally placed under suspicion of uh, racist, racist or uh, violent practices. Let me provide you with a different perspective now. The police is permanently coming under attack and they are under suspicion even in when there's no civil unrest. If you look at cases that have been driven by aggression against police officers, similar cases are being reported from the United States and elsewhere. Just a few months ago, um, many cases of violence against police officers occurred in um, Stuttgart and elsewhere in Germany. The police are being tasked with something impossible. They're to protect uh, society and themselves, yet they haven't got the tools, instruments to um, carry out their duties. Now, when an excessive force is used by police officers, of course, there must, this must be um, criminally investigated and uh, counted. Now. Our task as politicians and policymakers must be to back up our police officers, law enforcement authorities, and not to become a further obstacle to them carrying out their work. Ja sitten vihreiden ja Euroopan vapaan alliansin nimissä puhuu edustaja Diana Riba Hishiner. Yksi minuutti, olkaa hyvä. Gracias, Presidenta. Thank you very much. Europe has to act when there are cases of police violence in the member states. Many of these abuses uh, mask racist motives, such as those perpetrated against the Roma. But it also happens in different events. In Catalonia, for example, police brutality also took place against the Catalan Republican movement, leaving psychological and physical wounds that are difficult to heal. And to that, we can also add uh, uh, the links that different European police forces have to far-right groups. The police shouldn't, under any circumstances, violate human rights. On the contrary, they have to protect human rights. And that is why we suggest setting up an independent um, scrutiny system uh, of police violence within the rule of law, or uh, revising the Victim Protection Directive. The EU has to recognize the fact that we have to have supervision for police violence. Uh, there has to be accountability, and put, we have to put an end to police violence to protect uh, the rights and fundamental freedoms of all citizens. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mrs. Riva. And next, uh, on behalf of the ECR group, uh, Lucia Durish Nicholson of that one minute. Josef Chovanec, Tommy Holton, Rashan Chan. Thank you. Josef Chovanec, Carol Sander, Roland Sandro. These are the names of some of the individuals who are affected by police brutality in the European Union. And 63% of the racist attacks by police don't uh, have the courage to speak out against the violence uh, uh, 
uh, Chauvinet died because of the violence. Uh, he was the victim of, of uh, Belgian police, and for two years there were attempts to sweep this under the carpet. It was the wife of Chauvinet that was uh, courageous enough to uh, disclose and reveal what had happened. Uh, we debated the uh, death of George Floyd here in the European Parliament, but we're talking in this case of a Slovak citizen, an EU citizen, and uh, we man there were a lot of obstacles, but we managed to get the issue uh, on the agenda and debate about it. There are so many cases of police brutality, and often these cases are swept under the carpet. We have to make sure that there's prob uh, an ob objective inquiry and inspection to make sure. Thank you very much, Mrs. Nikolsonova. And next, I give the floor on behalf of the GUE NGL group uh, to Mrs. Daly. One minute. Uh, thanks, President. We talk about European values, but this is Europe. Spain asked to investigate and sanction the abusive use of force by police against Catalan protesters. Instead, they decorate them for their magnificent work. France, where the police are supposed to protect and serve, kill and maim citizens with golf ball-sized rubber bullets. Bulgaria, where police systematically target and harass Roma population and stand by while neo-Nazis target them and the LGBT community, facilitating ever-increasing homophobic assaults, resulting in incidents like in the city of Pavlov, where 30 to 40 neo-Nazis in open daylight publicly organised a purge of the park. And then graffiti against the organisers who tried to protest. No public outcry, no investigation, no sanction by the police. And Croatia last week where the police were involved in one of the most staggering episodes of violent torture committed against refugees and migrants, stripped, beaten, robbed of their money, their belongings burned, children raped with the branch of a tree. Is this the European values committed by our police? It is an outrage. A colleague Daly, um, I'm compelled to, to state that according to our rules of procedure, banners are not allowed. But thank you for your speech. Ja sitten siirrymme yksittäisten edustajien puheenvuoro. And now we move to individual members. And the first in that group, uh, Mr. Stefanets, one and a half minutes. Thank you. Now, the police have to assist and protect, and that is why it's shocking that without any reason there are people who die in police custody. That's what happened to Josef Hovanec, a Slovak citizen. In February 2018, he didn't get any assistance and he didn't get any protection. On the contrary, Belgian police officers um, had them under their knee for 15 minutes and inflicted so much suffering. I cannot believe that we only found out about this two years after it occurred, soon after this shocking information information was uh, disclosed we had we had to act but there also there's also good news the belgian police has also decided to act uh, looking and organizing an inquiry into this i must also say that i truly appreciate what mr dismasmacher the uh, general commissioner for the federal police has said but there had to be pressure put from the highest levels for something to happen this should have been routine procedure we need answers to our questions Why Why did all of this happen? Why did we find out so late? When will uh, people be held accountable? When will justice be done? I appreciate the work done by honest police officers, but human lives should be our top priority. I am convinced that the perpetrators will be brought to justice. I firmly believe that our appeal will change uh, the procedures in law enforcement in order to make sure that that police forces, uh, police forces uh, help and protect. And I hope that any cases of police brutality will uh, be the subject of inquiries. We shouldn't have these cases in Europe. And I would like to use this day to pay tribute to the memory of the Thank you, Mr. Stefanet. And next, Mrs. van Brent, one and a half minutes. Thank you, well, Voorzitter. Collegas. Uh 
Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we are discussing a, uh, a Slovak, uh, Mr. Slovenic, who died, and I'm really shocked as a Belgian, as are many of my co-citizens, at what happened in a Belgian police cell, and I do hope that in respect of the rule of law, there is rapid clarification of the events, not least uh, in light of the f family of the person concerned who need to know. Now, in, we rely on the forces of law and order, which is why confidence is so important. It's n not about the clear majority of the police, the men and women who every day do what they were trained to do and to protect people, but we mustn't be blind in light of the facts that the figures concerning racial profiling activities or arbitrary detention have shot up. And unfortunately, we don't have a clear overview of these figures. It's a real problem. We need to know what's going on in the police. Uh, transparency is important. We shouldn't close our eyes to extremists. There are extremists in the police too, and I find it regrettable that we haven't uh, given that issue enough attention in debate so f far. We need to be attentive. We need transparency. That's important uh, to ensure that the police can... Thank you. Next speaker... Michal Simeczka, one and a half minutes. So I uh, have seen the shocking recording uh, of police brutality. Olen nähnyt tämän videon, joka käsitteli tätä Slovakian kansalaisen kohdistunutta poliisiväkivaltaa Charleroiassa. Se on todella järkyttävä, erityisesti kun ajatellaan, minkälaisia protestia Yhdysvalloissa on ollut. Contravenes the European Convention of Human Rights as well as the Belgian Constitution. Now there was public outrage in Slovakia and Belgium and across Europe, and rightfully so, not least because... Uh, the proper investigation only picked up steam after public pressure and after the video was released. And again, it should not uh, be said, it goes without saying, that there can be no discrimination uh, when it comes to treatment of EU citizens by the various police forces across member states. And I, this is why I believe that the issue deserves a broader inquiry. I believe that Europol should look into the actions and police officers uh, and police training across the EU to make sure that EU citizens re uh, receive equal treatment. They must feel safe to go anywhere in the European Union without fear of being discriminated and their rights being disrespected by local police forces. Now, of course, we will continue to press on and follow the case of Josef Kovanec and to push for justice for him and his family, but it cannot stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next, I give the floor to Mrs. Sardone. One minute. Grazie. Oggi qui. Thank you. Today, the debate is on police brutality in the EU. But for as long as I've been in the European Parliament, I haven't witnessed the opposite type of debate. In other words, the violence that police are victims to every three hours, and a police officer in Italy is the victim of an attack. That means eight attacks per day. That means 235 attacks a month. More than 6,000 police officers ended up in hospital because they were attacked. Uh, often this happens uh, because of what immigrants are doing, and these cases are uh, on the rise. So, and yet now uh, it is police officers in the dock and accused of police brutality. Yes, of course, uh, sometimes uh, there are issues, but now they're asking for a CCTV uh, to cover their backs. These are individuals who defend us on a daily basis, and our group is always on the side of the law enforcement, and we would like to say a big thank you to them. Kiitokset, edustaja Saar. Thank you, Mrs. Sardone. And the next speaker is Mrs. Alametsa. One minute. 
Floor is yours. Dear colleagues, we have been devastated to witness police brutality in US, Hong Kong and Belarus. However, the same violent acts, even people dying in police custody, happen inside our own borders, especially to ethnic minorities. My home country, Finland, has one of the most trusted police forces. Yet we just saw the police using pepper spray against non-violent climate protesters. Some of the protesters were children. To me, these are painful news because I started my political activism in the street as a climate activist. How can you trust the police after this kind of incident? We need to take action. If the police is tasked to regulate itself, as it often is, there is a conflict of interest. Police force needs training, regulation, oversight and accountability. Police should be here to make us all feel safe, not afraid. Thank you, Mrs. Alametsa. And next I give the floor to Mr. Bruczynski. One minute. Thank you, Madam President. Before working in the European Parliament, I was the Interior Affairs Minister in the Polish Government. I supervised the Polish Police. And I'm proud of my work there, so I could see on this basis the professionalism and the involvement of uh, police officers who put their life at risk to help others. I could also see, in cooperation of Polish police with our European partners, that the level of professionalism and involvement to fight a crime such as terrorism, uh, drug traffic, pedophilia, that is something that is present commonly in the European Union. But today we talk about uh, unacceptable situations and criminal actions by the police. And this is something that is to be criticized. But this doesn't allow you to make general statements and to make uh, uh, judgments on thousands of people who protect our security on a daily basis. They pay the ultimate price also with their life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brodzinski. And the next speaker is Mr. Heichel. One and a half minutes. Thank you very much, Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen, in August this year, broad public opinion, not just in Slovakia, but throughout the EU, discovered what happened in Charroi two years ago that cost Jan Hovenetz his life. That happened after a brutal attack by the Belgian policeman at the airport in Charleroi. We must condemn that case. Inappropriate force was applied and signs of extremism were present. It's un incomprehensible for me that there was no will on the part of the Belgian police to investigate the whole case. and. When we saw the video, that's when it all took off. This brutal attack on an EU citizen was unimaginable, and we could not accept it. We tried in our group to talk about this topic. We wanted to have a resolution, but unfortunately that didn't succeed. However, this uh, debate... Uh, will see us not just discussing this case of a Slovak citizen, rather the situation in all member states uh, will be debated. We must take concrete steps against uh, extremism and racism in the police. This kind of conduct amongst the police has no place in the police force. The police is there uh, to apply the rule of law. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heichel. The next speaker is Mr. Rivière, one minute. Thank you, Madam President. Four days ago, a history teacher was murdered in broad daylight, decapitated in the street, and police tried to get the situation under control, and I salute them for their work in a climate of great violence. Just a few days after this barbaric act, we are being asked to consider in grossly exaggerated terms to take actions against Islam Islamophobic 
violence. Now, separatist forces are a threat to France and its integrity. 263 victims of violent Islam versus what figures for police violence. That's the real figures we should be discussing. So talking about this without putting a stop to migration is um, irrelevant. We need to be focusing our efforts on this uh, radical Islam. If we wait till tomorrow, it will be too late. Thank you, Mr. Rivière. Uh, and the next speaker is Mr. Yaki. One minute. Thank you, Madam President. Most police officers do very good work in favor of all citizens, but of course uh, there might be problems, and it's problematic where the states covers up and they scale. And there are only a few member states who are at the top of the list, and that's the breach of the right of law. Among those countries is France. Let's see what the statistics say. The police, yes, sir. back in 2019, the police killed 26 people. During the Yellow Vest protests, 11 people. 11 people lost hands because of grenades exploding. 2,000 people were injured. 295 attacks on journalists. In this connection comes my question. When are we going to debate on the right of law in France and what is being done by Mr. Macron? Have we got anyone in this chamber, people who are more equal than others, also, I want to know about the situation in Germany. We have all seen what happened in Dusseldorf. We have all seen what happened in Niederrhein-Westfalen, where ecologists were pulled off trees. So I want to hear from you what the state of the situation law. And Belgium requires a separate s debate altogether. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next speaker is Mrs. Kango. One minute. Good policing is a consequence of understanding the moral responsibility that comes with holding power. The legitimacy of policing is based upon consent, integrity, and accountability. 2020 has brought an appetite for change and self-examination. We should not miss this opportunity to renew our social contract and better ourselves as a society not only to ensure we stamp out any abuses of power or acts of brutality within our police forces, but also to bring to an end the growing threat of violence to police officers on our streets. These are difficult discussions to have, but they are necessary. When our institutions and those within it fail, which at times they do, we must not hesitate to hold our own feet to the fire Acknowledging the wrongdoing of the few does not undermine the integrity of the many. It only strengthens it. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kanko. And the next speaker is uh, uh, Mr. Chambachki, one minute. Thank you, Honorable Madam President. Last year, si. following George Floyd's death, in, here in the hemicycle, there were declarations, there were demonstrations by Antifa, by the Black Panthers, and such similar organizations. There was no reaction to Josef Hovanet's death, however. A teacher was decapitated the other day in France. There was no reaction either, no concern was voiced. Why was that the case? Both fatalities were Christians, Europeans, they were parts of our civilization. The perpetrators, on the other hand, were being protected by Antifa, the Black Panthers, by all other extreme leftist organizations who are waging a cultural war against our Christian civilization. Double standards are being applied. We criticize Poland and Hungary of the lack of rule of law there. Let me use the opportunity to express my sympathy with Bulgarian police, who, despite the deplorable conditions they work under, are able to withstand the pressure exerted on them by extremists and hooligans. Thank you for your attention. 
Thank you, Mr. Chambachki. The next speaker is Mr. Komin. One minute. Gracias, Presidenta. Thank you very much. On the 1st of October 2017, the Spanish police attacked thousands of Catalans that were just trying to vote. And these images were went around the world. I'm sure you all saw them. And back in the time I was responsible for health in the Catalan government, the report uh, published talked about more than a thousand uh, psychological and physical deaths. What did the EU do about this? What did the Commission say? Nothing. Silence. Uh, embarrassing silence. A shameful silence. We criticize police brutality everywhere, in Turkey, in Belarus, even in Belgium. But when Spain commits abuses, then it seems to be a domestic issue. In the name of the unity of Spain, everything is uh, allowed, and yet the court has uh, ruled against it. Uh, there's the issue of proportionality. Do you not think that proportionality is an issue in the case of the Catalan minority? Europe, stop being silent and put an end to this crackdown. Thank you, Mr. Comin. And, and this was the debate of the members. And now I would like to give the floor to uh, uh, Commissioner Johansson.